6 August, Every American Horror Story Season, Ranked from Worst to Best. Recorded by Chromecast Channel. Voice, Alice. When comparing the seasons of most long-running television dramas, it's like comparing apples to apples, you've got the same characters, the same actors, and the same locales. Even if the stories change, the show generally keeps working with the same stuff. But with American Horror Story, the show that launched a thousand anthology series, comparing seasons is like comparing apples to a basement full of monsters created by a psychotic doctor in the basement of a murder house. Let's try anyway. Each American Horror Story season is so vastly different from the others that its positives and negatives really stand out, like a lobster clawed freak in a conservative Florida town. Even if they're not totally equal, Looking at each season this way allows us to figure out why they worked, why they didn't, and why they, sometimes, went off the rails. Here's a complete ranking of the best, worst, and scariest that AHS creators Ryan Murphy and Brad Falcuk have to offer. Number 6. Freak Show The funny thing about Freak Show is that it had the best first episode of any AHS season, it featured Twisty the Clown, John Carroll Lynch murdering a pair of picnicking 50s sock hoppers, then capped off with Elsa Mars, Jessica Lange, doing an anachronistic performance of the David Bowie classic Life on Mars. But man, was it all downhill from there. Freak Show gave us a different villain every week, whether it was Twisty, Edward Mordrake, Wes Bentley, a two-faced man who returns every Halloween to harvest souls, the closeted strongman Del Toledo, Michael Chiklis, Stanley, Dennis O'Hare, the guy who wanted to kill the freaks and put them in a museum, the insane magician Chester Crabbe, Neil Patrick Harris, or Dandy Mutt, Finn Whitrick, a sociopathic rich kid who always got his way. In the end, it was all just too confusing and annoying to enjoy. Freak Show was basically a spin-wheel trick that hit the woman every time, even though she was never the target. Number 5. Roanoke this season gets points for trying, but that's about it. The first five episodes of Roanoke were disguised as My Roanoke Nightmare, a cheesy TLCS reality show about a couple who barely survived a year in a house full of spirits and monsters. The show within a show premise let AHS create dramatic reenactments of its various horrors, including two killer nurses, predatory spirits, and the cannibalistic meth dealers who live next door and the season's back half blurred the lines even further by putting the real people and the actors who played them back in the house for a reunion special called Return to Roanoke, Three Days in Hell. It was interesting to see how the manufactured horrors of the first show compared with the real horrors of the second show, but other than that, both parts of Roanoke dragged for way too long. Want to know why the Roanoke colony disappeared? It's because they got bored and changed the channel. Number 4. Hotel. Like so many AHS seasons, a whole picture doesn't quite emerge when you step back to look at Hotel. It gave us a long search for a serial killer, who was obviously Wes Bentley's detective John Lowe, Lady Gaga's glam vampire living in the hotel penthouse with her romantic peccadillos, an addiction monster that anally raped junkies, a reclusive millionaire who killed people for sport and a heavy-handed critique of people who don't vaccinate their children. This thing was a mess, but it was stylish as hell. Who can forget bald drag queen Elizabeth Taylor, Dennis O'Hare, as her dress fluttered down an Art Deco hallway, or Gaga and Matt Bomer coated in the blood of a couple they just killed after sex, or the two models kept alive in neon art installations that drain their blood. Hotel was like a sumptuous music video that never ended. It was all surface and no substance, but man, what a surface. Number 3. Coven. Was Coven good in the same way that The Wire or Mad Men is good? No. Was Coven horrendously enjoyable? Um, do burning fashion witches shout Balenciaga? When they're roasting at the stake. Almost entirely devoid of male characters, this season about super-powered witches was a camp extravaganza. It deserves a high praise just for the wigs and costumes alone, not to mention Angela Bassett's terrific performance as Marie Laveau, 
a voodoo witch with an axe to grind. The problem with Coven was that every character could be brought back from the dead, so there was little to no drama in any battle, but with all the bitchy quips, cat fights, and Kathy Bates's wisecracking severed head, no one minded all that much. Number 2. Murder House When the top-tier cast members of the first season, Kate Mara, Connie Britton, Dylan McDermott, started dropping like flies, the audience had no idea what to expect. How was AHS going to survive when all of its cast members kept getting killed off? After the finale, when Murphy and Falk Hugh announced the show would be back in a totally different form for season 2, it blew just about everyone's minds. That final twist notwithstanding, Murder House was a quality season that used the haunted house as an allegory to tell the story of a family ripped apart by grief and infidelity. The gimped monster, the little critters that rattled around in the basement, and Dylan McDermott in various states of undress are images no one will soon forget. Number 1. Asylum The second season of American Horror Story is its pinnacle so far. Asylum tells story of Alana Winters, Sarah Paulson, a 60s journalist investigating the abuses at a New England insane asylum who ends up getting committed to the very asylum she is covering. There she runs afoul of Sister Jude, Jessica Lang, the stern nun who runs the place, Bloody Face, Zachary Quinto, a serial killer who serves as its main psychiatrist, and Dr. Arden, James Cromwell a Nazi war criminal who may or may not be Dr. Mengele. Oh, and let's not forget about the aliens that might be visiting the patients. Somehow, all of these crazy plots coalesced to tell a story about how people cast out from society, gays and lesbians, sex-positive women, and people in interracial relationships, can be victimized by the institutions that try to contain them. Also, Jessica Lang performed the name game, which was a genius. Thanks for your watching. Please subscribe and share. Chromecast channel. We're around you.